you've been under a rock and you don't know the Bud Light story, I'll remind you what happened because there are some really good companies that are stepping in to help Bud Light workers who've been laid off as a result of the controversy. Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, announced last week that it was laying off 2% of its U.S. workforce, primarily corporate and marketing roles, rather than frontline workers. I was really concerned when I saw, and again, I, I, I am all for you, the people, deciding how to spend your dollars based on something that bothers you and you say, I'm not going to support it, some type of corporate social issues like we saw with Bud Light. Target said, hold my beer. They showed up a few weeks later and tried their own, you know, positioning. Uh, Disney, uh, their their stock price in the crapper. Uh, ESPN hemorrhaging money. Why? All of these organizations have decided, as is their right, let me say this, I don't think it's good business policy, but it's their right. They can do whatever they want to. But they have to deal with the consequences, and they need to be careful with those consequences because those consequences many times are good men and women who've done a very good job in their role, and they didn't choose to be active in promoting social issues that are very controversial. They may even disagree with the decision, but they're the ones that are the victims. And let's just be very clear. Bud Light gets involved in, in what is a nuclear social issue. They pay the price big time, sales, stock price, everything else. And the CEO lets go of a bunch of people, but he ain't hurting. It happened on his watch. He's responsible. You know what I would have liked to have seen? I would have liked to have seen Bud Light restructure some things. Big-time corporate earners, maybe they take a hit. They're the ones that allowed all this stuff to happen. you got some marketing folks that had nothing to do with this. You say, well, they're six-figure earners, white collar but they got a life. they got a family. I think it's actually insult to injury for Bud Light to lay off 2% of their workforce. I'll bet you if I could sit with the Bud Light execs, we could have found a way to not lay off those people. There's some fat cats who green-lighted this decision and decided to get involved in things besides making cheap, horrible-tasting beer. But that's where we are. So, enter two companies. Public SQ and Red Balloon. And what they did is, is they put out public offers to the laid-off Bud Light workers to help them find jobs. Public SQ CEO Michael Seifert said, we hope this results in more and more positive actions that hopefully send a strong counteracting message to the actions of Bud Light over the past few months. Now, full disclosure, these are conservative organizations. Okay. Uh, but nonetheless, they're saying, hi, this is who we are, and we want to help put your resume out to a lot of companies. And this is a direct quote, both Public Square, that's what we'll call them, and Red Balloon will distribute your resumes to our respective networks of tens of thousands of businesses. Seifert went on to say they'd already received quite a few resumes from laid-off Bud Light employees since releasing the letter last week and have been brokering relationships between them and businesses within their network looking to hire. Okay, now, uh, this has, this consumer-driven backlash, okay, hasn't solved anything. And I and I want to be the first to say, look, if, if you used to buy Bud Light and their campaign offended you, and you don't like it, fantastic. Do whatever you want to. You can buy it, whatever you want to. Uh, those of you who used to shop at Target, maybe you've walked away from Target, you know, because of their stances on stuff. And by the way, very public. They're saying, look, this is what we're behind, and we're going to do it, and if we lose customers, fine. Now, look, I don't have to agree with Target at all. But they have decided this is what they're doing, that they're going to push 
and promote things that are highly controversial. Again, I don't have to like it. I don't have to shop there. I'll tell you this. Disney's done stuff for years and years and years that I don't agree with, but I still take in my kids. You know, I'm not the person that's just walking around looking for a company that I shop at or that I have shopped at and, and looking at everything they do, everything they support, because that's not going to get you anywhere. But I have no problem with anybody deciding where to put their dollars. And folks, where we are headed, full blown, is you're going to see a, a new type of consumer purchasing. I think it's going to spin off companies that are competitors to some of these big these big brands. You're seeing it right now. I don't know how Rumble's going to do, but Rumble is is positioning themselves as competitors to YouTube. But will they make it? Who knows? President Trump got mad at Twitter. He went and started his own social media. Will it work? Who knows? I think you're going to see more diversification and I think it's going to be aligned with values. So I want to say something here that some of you may be surprised that I'm going to say, but I think it I think it begs the conversation. Is it possible that conservatives could come out and say, you know what, we're going to build a company that's a competitor to, and you say X, Y, Z. And they get into pushing social issues above and beyond or as equal to the product or service that they offer. You bet it's going to happen. It's already happening. Is that a problem? No. But what I think it's going to do is create a third window. And here's what I think is going to happen. You're going to have companies that are going to say, you know what, we're all in, and we're going after this ideology, and let's say it's on the right. And then you got companies that are going to go, you know what, uh, we're going to say we're all in on the left. And that's who we are, and unashamedly so, and we're putting all our chips in the table that way. So you're going to have companies on both sides. And by the way, it's already happening, Okay. Then what's going to happen is you have a lot of companies go, you know what? And this might take more courage than the right and the left. In fact, it does. You're going to see some companies go, you know what? We're not going to comment one way or the other. We're going to pull our dollars from lobbying towards social issues. We're going to pull our dollars from political PACs. We're going to pull our influence back and go, you know what? We are simply going to make beer or we are going to make clothes or we are going to make shoes and we'll do a one-for-one -one model and we'll sell something and it will benefit other people from the sales we're just going to get out of the political game of catering to one side or the other we're just going to go we're about boots or we're about golf clubs or we make boats and here's the deal. If you are a arch conservative or a raging liberal or whatever, we don't care because we'll never know. We're just going to sell you a boat because liberals and conservatives, progressives and libertarians, well, there's a big group of a lot of those political factions that like to get on a boat. And so they're going to go, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to make really good boats. And so I think there is a win for people. And by the way, I support both sides. I mean, if you want to you want to promote leftist ideologies, great. And you can get customers to buy your stuff, great. That's capitalism. I'm for capitalism first and foremost. Same thing on the right. But I think there's going to be a massive opportunity where consumers are like, just stop running your mouth and sell me the stuff I want.